This is the Authentic Dating series brought to you by Ahmad and David. Where we explore what it takes to have a dating life you're excited about. Hey guys, I'm David. I'm Ahmad. And this is the Authentic Dating series. So welcome back to our amazing podcast. Uh, We have a few announcements before we get into today's topic. Uh, The main one is on the 29th, sorry. 30th. We also get the date. So on the 30th of this month, so this uh, next, you know, basically a week's time, on a week's time on Sunday, we are having our first day long, um, what, what are we calling it? Is it a workshop? No. Yeah. Course. Yeah. Workshop course. Yes. And, and it's called the power of authentic communication. And what this is about is teaching men how to tap into their own authentic voice and uh, create. Uh, meaningful connections with people through actually just talking yeah yeah because because so often it's like you see there's courses like how to master conversation master conversational hacks and Mm. stuff like that but actually it it negates your own natural ability to generate really interesting conversation out of the topics that are interesting to you and that you feel passionate about and you know we've been running our um create attraction through conversation kind of one hour intro course and we found that a lot of men have just been blown away by the power of some of the exercises where we help them tap into that ability to like tap into their own emotional power the, the emotional power of talking about the things that matter to you or that just resonate with you and and then being able to take that into their lives and using that to create meaningful connections on the dates or whether it be work or whatever it is so, you know, due to that, we've, we made a longer course that has more exercises. There's more tidbits. We've got some, um, we've got like a cheat sheet around conversation. And it's just going to be a lot more powerful than the one, the one hour. Yeah, with, with this course, what we've done is we've taken all the feedback from the one hour course and we've developed the exercises and experiences so that the course won't just be us talking. In the one hour session, we're mostly talking and we do take some questions, but this one, we're going to be imparting advice and and exercises and and wisdom in a way that you can really assimilate it for yourself. And as David said, this is about you learning how to speak for yourself, not, you know, the 21 ways in which we have conversations, which, you know, it's, it's pretty much pointless because what are you going to do when you run out of the 21 ways? Yeah. So we're going to teach you how to create your own conversation and, and actually it's quite effortless and as I've been saying to people it all you have to do is bring yourself yeah yeah there's nothing you need to do there's nothing nothing special needs to be about you beforehand and it's, it's yeah it's a really amazing course and we've given a really great price because mm. normally it's 300 pounds because obviously it's a lot of time and effort as much as it's like a day-long course it's also taken us the best part of like you know probably four weeks to write Plus, you know, it's got kind of 15 years, our own 15 years of experience on how to talk to women, like mm. how it is that you get in touch with the emotion of what you want to talk about and make conversation interesting and what we've learned and we've talked to hundreds of other men. Yeah. And just to, to, to add to that, David, you know, if anyone's in any doubt about what women are interested in hearing, you should check out our podcast because women love it. <laughs> they, <laughs> they absolutely love our message. And so, you know, if you want to hear from some guys who are you know, speaking to, to women and know what women want. Uh, you know we're, we're definitely those guys and um we can really help you because we've been as david said 15 years mm. of, of um, learning for ourselves but also coaching experience for about 10 years uh teaching you know what we've learned um to, to to men and and them having great success uh all different types of men yeah exactly so there's a discount code uh, called podcast, which gets you um, £100 off the course. So instead of being 300 you get it for 200 which is a great price for the, the amount of the amount you'll get out of this. You'll look back on that and have £200 and be like, God, I'd have happily spent three times as much. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, this is going to be in the show notes. You can find it there. Or if you really want, you can go to Eventbrite and search for The Power of Authentic Communication and you'll find it on there. And just, you know, it's on the 30th and it starts at 11 p.m. UK time. 11 a.m. 8 a.m. I always do this. I can't do time. Yeah. Right. So, um, great. Was there any other announcements for today? No, I think that's it. All right. So today we have a really uh, important episode because this is something that's been reflected to us quite a lot uh, and especially by women uh, and it's it's, a, it's about the lack of assertiveness that men have in dating and specifically I think this shows up quite a bit in the way in which men approach creating dates mm. um, making dates with women planning and and so we're going to speak into this today and and one of the one of the things that I think is really important to highlight is that actually 
a lot of men uh, don't even recognize when they've lost this leadership of assertiveness. So we're going to speak into that and we're going to end uh, with the eight um, key things that you must do in order to you know, reclaim your leadership and assertiveness in your dating. Yeah. And this is, as we said, this is a conversation I keep having with women. I was out uh, yesterday for a kind of party gathering outdoors just so you know you don't why I wasn't breaking any corona rules mm. and um, yeah numerous women were talking about their dating lives and they're just like yeah I met a guy and he got my number and then you know talking about how you know he's not doing certain things to create the date he's not doing things to to lead and it seems to be and I know I know of guys who have gone out with women on numerous dates and the women are like oh yeah he's a really nice guy but and it's always this, it's the same, similar but that keeps coming up. And it's like, but he doesn't, he doesn't lead. He's not assertive. He's always waiting for me to do things. And it's like, this is one of the biggest attraction killers around. Mm. Yeah, that's, um, this is something that I know that I dealt with a lot uh, when I was learning um, basically how to be, how to be better me. Mm. <laughs> and, and I think this is an important thing that um, David and I were discussing about this is like a lot of men feel that in order to get a woman mm. they need to give her everything and anything that she wants mm. uh, and and this is i think one of the issues as well when um that comes up a lot when men learn about dating from women yeah because then all, all they ever hear is oh this is what women want and they think that then their goal and purpose in dating is to just give women what they want yeah which is not the same as what women are attracted to yes yeah, or what women find attractive that's a really it's a really good, good distinction there mm. you can learn all the things that women want and still be completely shit at dating mm. and not be able to generate attraction for women yeah. and you just but actually it's like i always say it's like what women want and what women need mm -hmm. yeah and the thing that comes to my mind is something that um we, we we mentioned at the start of this episode about the power of authentic communication and a core thing that we're going to discuss in this course around the power of authentic communication is the difference between authentic communication and manipulative communication. Mm. And a lot of the stuff when guys are out there trying to find what women want is dum dum dum. <laughs> it's a form of manipulation because you you want to give the woman something in order for her to give you back something. You yeah. want that you want that intimacy. You want that closeness. You want that sex. And 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 so you think okay. I can get that. It's like, you know, putting the, the cheese out for the mouse, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like putting a little cheese out for the mouse. And like, I'm going to trap that mouse. And, um, you know, that's not a, that's, that's just not, I was going to say it's not a cool way to create relationships. It's just not, it's just not a great foundation for a happy relationship. Yes. And we're in the business of creating happy relationships. Yes. So, yes, exactly that. yeah. So, yeah, so, you know, recognizing that you've lost your leadership or that you're you're manipulating or or surrendering your leadership in order to somehow gain something back is the first step. And I guess you could title that awareness. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like when I say first step, it's like of this topic, because a lot of guys, as I said before, don't think this is a problem or they think, oh, you know, I've read all these things online. I know what a woman wants. I'm just going to go give it to her. Not realizing that actually what's attractive is a man who's in his own personality and his leadership. Yes, exactly. And it might sound strange that, like, you know, what I hear a lot is, you know, we talk about toxic masculinity and, you know, it's been a, and I don't need to go into it here and all the details, I'm sure you understand. And what men I speak to a lot is like, oh, but isn't, women don't want us to lead because that's toxic. And it's like, no, that's mm -hmm. not what it is. You've got the wrong in this. The toxic masculinity is all about men leading with no care or giving a fuck about what a woman wants, right? In terms of the Me Too, what happened around Me Too, which continues to happen as well, is that men are like, I am in my desire. I want sex. I'm going to take her back home and I'm going to forcibly mm. have this sex, right? Without any regard for what she wants. That's, that's actually, that's not even leadership. That's just being a fucking idiot, right? Mm. That's just forcibly forcing yourself upon someone. Mm. Leadership in, involves love and care for the other person. And if you're dating someone, you're like, okay, I care and like this person. And, you know, I'm going to take action towards what I want, but also continually checking in for what she wants, right? And what she likes. But it doesn't, mean that the opposite thing a lot of men are doing which is surrendering their leadership and being like hey 
Uh, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Let's just do what you want. Let's do what you want. <laughs> mm, mm. And this is, is, it's like I've seen so many potentially good relationships fall apart with other people fall apart because men who continually do that because it is deeply unattractive for a woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, and it's definitely something that I, with my uh, cultural upbringing um, coming from, I, I was going to say typical, maybe it's not typical, um, Asian background, but coming from a, a a family where I felt, you know, that what I wanted or my opinions were not important and, and that in order to then gain validation from others around me, I needed to essentially listen to what they wanted and just give it to them. And, and so I think this is one of the things that um, people need to recognize, men need to recognize is if, if in your life that that has been present from a young age, it's likely that this is now spilling over into your dating life. You yeah. know, if you were from a young age, you were taught to be independent and free and, and out in the world and to learn from your mistakes and just to make mistakes, mm. then, you know, more likely you'll be like, oh, okay, well, I'll just apply the same thing to my dating. Mm. Whereas if you're, if you haven't been given that freedom from a young age, then more than likely that way of being from a young age has now become who you are today. And, and it's important to recognize where this is affecting your relationships because it is. And, and, and as David pointed out there, women find it deeply unattractive when you're constantly asking for their approval for every decision mm. that you're making. It lacks excitement. Yeah. Like what I've, what I've discovered, you know, you d discard all the, the, um, all the other points and, and whatever. And you just think, wow, yeah, there's just no... Where's the where's the randomness? Where's the fun? Mm -hmm. You know, where's the joy? Where's the where's the adventure? Like, you know, everyone, not just women, men and women, want to have a fun time, want to be creative. You know, want to have the spark. Yeah, the spark doesn't happen when it's just lackluster. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, it's nothing happens. Yeah, and it's also it's like just remembering that for you know we talk about masculine, feminine energies. It's like and the masculine gives direction, mm -hmm. right? It creates a plan. It creates direction. It creates a container for the 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 feminine to be free and move her energy and be in the dance and in the play. And I have to get you to, to I know you love that word container, but you might have to describe that. For some well, it's like that. it's almost it's, it's put in terms of football. The container in a football game is is actually the pitch, okay. right? That's the pitch. It's the lines. It's you could even argue the referee is part of the container. It's what holds the play. Mm. And then you could argue that the players and the type of game that unfolds is quite feminine, really. It's mm. like, is it going to be an artistic game that's filled with lovely goals and blah, blah, blah? Or is it going to be a stale game because there's this like entrenched defenses and so forth? It's mm. like, are you creating Are you creating a container in any type or are you just going, oh, I'm not going to create a container. I'm going to tell you to do this, you know? And I'm going to get into some of this, but it's like, are you willing to be in your, your masculine direction and leadership and the Durant's one for many men is no, you're not willing to be in that because mm. you're scared. You're scared that if you do that, she may not like what you decide. Mm. And the funny thing is, is that she'll respect you a lot more for making decisions. And then she goes, well, I'm not interested in that. And you go, okay, cool. How about this other thing? Mm. But at least you put forward some ideas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Yeah, okay. So, so I think we've established a couple of things here. Just to recap then is that Firstly, recognizing that you've lost your leadership, uh, such a big point that I'm recapping in the middle so that it, you, you notice and you pay attention to like, are you surrendering? Are you just giving over in this hope that by doing that, you're going to win favors? or win What examples would you give of like signs that you are handing over your leadership? Well, one of the, one of the ones that uh, I think the most, one of the most common ones is when a guy says to a girl, uh, well, they, they're planning a date. And it's come to the, the stage now where they're going to have a date. And then the guy says to the girl, oh, what do you want to do? Mm. And then maybe they're going to they decide or she decides, uh, okay, well, we could go and have dinner. He's like, oh, what would you like to eat? Yeah. And then you want to go to the movies. What do you want to watch? Yeah. You want to go on a trip? Where do you want to go? Yeah. <laughs> so always checking in. And it's less about the question. It's more about the checking in and, and making sure that at every step of the way, um that the that um that 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 it's been validated so you can't make a mistake there as a guy you can't mm. make the mistake because you're in, you're checking in so you're like well okay you want to eat here you want to watch this movie um and actually there's another level as I, as I talk i realize there's another level to this as well and this is going to be a surprising one for for a lot of guys it's 
preempting their checklist and then thinking that you're you're like you've lived your life in the right way in such that you will fulfill her checklist so the typical ones are like having the right job mm. i've got the right job so hey i've got this right job so you know naturally you should like me yeah. like well that's a, it's a done deal you know <laughs> I, I work for a blue chip company now it's, this is you know don't, you don't have to look anywhere else i'm mm. that i'm that guy i'm that blue chip guy <laughs> you've been looking for this guy i'm that guy or you know got their own house got their own business or you know dress as well or you know like the kind of the thing of what we were saying before about um uh, a lot of dating advice that has existed and still exists is around like what women want. Mm. And so, you know, women want a state of stability, want honesty and all of these things, not wrong, right? And they're not wrong. But if you take them as a point of like, oh, this is what she wants. So I'm going to fulfill that. And then uh, that means the doors of heaven will open and yeah. she will come forth to me. Well, you're going to be in for a surprise when she doesn't. And it happens so often. Yeah. And then men are like, I don't understand. Like they're all hamming on the keyboard. Like I don't understand. Like what is going on? I did everything correctly. On, on Reddit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did everything correctly. Fuck these women. Like mm. I'm gonna men who go the other way or whatever. Like yeah. I don't know what to do anymore. And and the thing is, it, it's a frustration born born out of the fact that really, and and this is one of the biggest lessons for me. We talk so much about um, authentic communication and what to do on dates and and this and that. But but really, like. You got to learn to understand who you are, mm. and if you don't spend any time on that, I mean, what are you doing here on this planet? Like, you know, we're not here to just placate for other people, yeah. but to learn who we are and see what we can offer and give people from the talents and gifts that we do have, right? So, like David and I uh, and, my, and myself, our life experiences has led us to creating this podcast. We we've, we've been overly consumed with the concepts of dating you know in our lives to the point we're like well we should share this stuff now mm -hmm. like we, we've done our own research and thesis <laughs> independently and come back and say well why don't we create a podcast it's like that sort of thing you know we didn't go oh what do, what are what do people want to know right yeah we could learn about dating dave and do a podcast about dating that seems to be what people want to know it's like no we just happen to be a couple of guys that were just obsessed with this area of our lives and uh we learned a lot along the way and, yeah. and so and that's an interesting thing so yeah, those are some examples, and and the first one was a little bit easier to recognise. The second one, I think, is a bit more society based and a bit insidious in that people just go, "Well, this is what I've been told my yep. whole life that yep. people want from me." Cool. So we'll get into the the first point actually, um, and this is something. This is you know this is a really obvious way in which men lack leadership is like to make the move to message a girl mm. like. You've taken her, you've given her, you've taken her number, right? And set the scene. You've taken her number and she's taken your number. Maybe you met her out at a bar or you met her at a, uh, an event or something like that. You both got each other's numbers and you're waiting for her to message you. Hmm. Like this is the, this is a prime example of not being, taking any leadership. Hmm. It's like, uh, I'll message her. Oh, if she messages me, that means she likes me. And I'll, then I will start some conversation. Mm. And this can also look like um, when you're on, say, dating app, you're on Tinder, Bum not sorry, Bumble, like Tinder, something like that. You match and you're like, okay, we've matched. Let me wait for her to message me. This is the biggest fucking stupid thing you could mm. do, right? This shows that you lack all like ability to lead because you're waiting. You are, you are basically completely in the feminine energy of receiving and being passively waiting. Mm -hmm. And I can speak into the um, the thing to recognize there is is the fear of fucking it up mm. and making a mistake, and and so then actually the mistake you end up making is actually displaying that you that you don't have the the ability to to lead. Yes. Because right from the beginning, a woman can sense not she's not psychic, but she can sense from just from your behavior what kind of guy you're going to be. And exactly. If, and if you're going to be that guy who's not really messaging or hard to talk to, yeah, then you're basically giving the impression that you're going to be hard to talk to and yeah. you're, you're giving that away. And and so the thing to develop is being willing, be willing to make a mistake. Really. Being vulnerable. Yeah. Being vulnerable to making mistakes. And when we say vulnerable, it's not like being weak. It's actually being strong enough to go, I'm going to send her a message and she may not reply. Mm -hmm. And I can live with myself if that happens yeah or, but actually being in the result of like what i really wanted her to reply and us get to know each other but if she doesn't get back that's okay too she has that freedom and choice yeah and um and and because i know one of the things i used to to, to worry about as well is that one is not replying but the other one is like saying something that would upset the person 
or be inappropriate or something mm. like that and being worried about that and and so for both what david just said and what what i'm saying now you're only going to learn how to deal with those things emotionally and physically and in the moment by actually doing it and you know having someone not reply happens and mm. and to give you the the opposite end of the spectrum is I guarantee you at some point in your life you're not going to reply to someone exactly and so it's just that it's just the way things go and we're not saying don't reply to people <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but what we're saying is like it it happens all, all around um but you like if you're worried about this and you're not taking action then you're missing out because you're not going to randomly learn this it's not the matrix where you download it into your head okay? <laughs> here we in this world we live we we learn by doing yeah and and we we gain confidence by doing we so. live in a world of action as i say to a lot of our coaching clients mm. yeah okay point number two is this is one i see again i see a lot of guys and again we speak to women who talk to us about this is men who are not leading and expanding the conversation you know you've you're, you're on you're on tinder and you start the conversation and maybe you started a conversation of, hey, how are you? Which if you listen to any of our previous episodes, I will tell you you're being a fucking idiot. Starting mm-hmm. any conversation like that on any dating app because it actually shows you that you're not original and authentic. But we'll, we'll slide past that for now, right? Mm-hmm. You're not expanding the conversation. Like, hey, how are you? Single little question. She's like, hey, I'm good. How are you? You're like, oh, I'm good. What have you been up to today? Now, this is this is a long this shows me a conversation that's gonna end up in dry town mm. the most boring place you could ever find mm. yourself in tumbleweedville right <laughs> where you know you boring questions are fired back and forth right mm. now and what you can do to to mitigate this to change this right is something that again we, te- we always teach our clients this is expanding conversation if someone says hey how are you right now we're so used to just answering that question with good fine okay not bad call one letter sometimes you know these cool kids just say k now what you want to do is expand on that and be like hey you know what would what does the question mean what how would i like to answer this question ah you know i've had a good day or i've had a great day i'm feeling like this this is what's been going on for me today because then you've expanded the conversation out of the realms Mm. of a few words into what we call conversation right mm-hmm. where there's some story there's some some feelings and emotions exchanged and that's again a sign of leadership you're willing to be vulnerable in a way with what's going on for you mm-hmm. right and you see a bit of a trend here there's vulnerability and leadership mm-hmm. right these things go hand in hand together mm. yeah it's a it's a um... I was just talking to David about this uh Indian matchmaking show mm. and you see it a lot with um with guys on there who again it's the same sort of issue they're not they're not in their own natural assertiveness they're very concerned or feeling shy mm. and then what naturally happens is these sort of questions so hey what's up what are you up to what are you doing and it's 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 giving the impression that you're having a conversation but actually you're trying to ask the other person to do all the work yeah and 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 the and the key thing here is like that's a lot of that's a lot of asking yeah because then you're putting them on 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 the um on um, in the what was it putting put, wait, basically you're putting the pressure on them so you mm. yeah so there is a pressure there is a vacuum that's created in a conversation mm. and if you don't take charge of that and actually expand in it yourself by again taking a risk like in your own way because maybe there is something and actually not even maybe 100 percent of the time there's always something that you can say or that you want to say or that comes up in your mind whatever it is like and it happens so often a very small example um and to to piggyback off of what david was saying about the hi how are you how are you and then what like actually speaking into that and sharing about um more than just a an automatic response is is a very simple one that people overlook all the time is how do people actually respond like there's your response Mm. but if i was to ask um um if I was to ask you, David, how how was yesterday? Man, it was a good day, actually. Um, met some people who I know through my partner, and we had some really good conversation, actually. I got really got into a conversation, actually, about talking about how corona and this period of six months has allowed people to almost, because there's less noise in the media, we've, we've gone after some topics that wouldn't have normally been spoken about. You know, racism, for instance, you can talk about political unrest across multiple countries mm. and, you know, that sort of topic. And even I've talked about the fact that 
in the world we live in now in comparison to maybe 30 years ago, we are able through social media to understand the experience of people we've never met or wouldn't normally meet. Mm -hmm. So like in David's voice, you can hear that he's quite upbeat and he's excited. Uh, he was excited. He had a good, he literally had a good day. He didn't just say it. He could, you could feel the words as he was, as he was speaking that he actually had a good day. And, and so one could even offer, even if I, if I just asked David, you know, how, how, if I asked you, how, how are you? And give me a one word answer. I'm good. Okay. So yeah, like you can hear in his voice, like he says, he says, I'm good. And good is an interesting one because a lot of people say it, but they say it in different ways. Mm -hmm. David actually said it there, I, in my opinion, it, it sounded very assured and flat. Like it wasn't like excited particularly. It was just like, I'm good. Like he just felt grounded perhaps. Uh, and very stable in what he's at. But you see, I can deduce so much from just one thing when you actually pay attention. So expanding the conversation is as much about paying attention and listening mm. to everything and allowing everything as an input. Uh, because so often, this is how I end up speaking to a lot of people is, you know, asking, hi, hi, how are you? And then just responding to whatever it was that they just said. And mm. in, the, in the context, whether it's at like a supermarkets, you're talking to the cashier and you mm. just say, hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? And then they say something you're like, oh, are you having a long day? Or like I had one recently where I said that and I said, um, oh, is it uh, Monday morning blues? He said, no, no, no. I just came back from holiday. And then he said, boom. boom. Yeah, yeah. Just boom. Conversation. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, bang. Just like, I was like, oh, wow. Cool, man. I get that. Mm. You know, not just, oh, you sad. Like, oh, you feel a bit flat. Like everything. Okay. No, yeah. yeah. Just came back from holiday. Just get back into it. Really excited. Really relaxed. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Just like, you see. And, and that's just paying attention to feeling. So there's always an opening. Yeah. Even yeah. if people are not giving you much to work with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And expanding the conversation again is leading the conversation. It's another complaint women come to us. It's like, I'm talking to guys and I'm having to do all the heavy lifting in the conversation. Mm. I'm having to be Carry like... Carry the whole fucking thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking questions about him and where he's from and what like he's Like Jesus with to. the cross. Yeah. Bearing <laughs> <laughs> that, that cross. <laughs> yeah, because the guy is un, unwilling to mm. lead the conversation. It's like... You know, you go on a date with a woman and you lead conversation like this, she will leave feeling like I've had a great day. I've mm. really enjoyed this. Yeah. And, you know, for any women listening, and because I know a lot of women listen, um, if you do come across this uh, guy that does that, 99% of the time, they're actually shy or scared, yeah. you know, and, and they have a lot to say. Um, and I guess it's about making them feel uh, comfortable about being shy. And, and nervous that yeah. really allows people to be open yeah. like, oh fuck okay it's okay for me to be nervous all right cool yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah we all get nervous it's yeah, fine yeah, yeah. cool um so the next one is lead in asking her out so this this was pertaining to like the first the first moment asking her out yeah yeah, yeah so this is like in general you know this is a theme with everything uh, that we're talking about is making the first move right like messaging mm. expanding conversation not just waiting and nowhere else is it more important. Yes, okay, we're living in a society now of like you know, uh, women's rights and, and women have power and, and yes, they do and, and yes, they have rights. Uh, but there is nothing sexier than a man that takes charge of a situation and and um and lovingly you know not mm. controlling not like you come here we do this like, yeah. <laughs> but but like you know out of fun and joy um asks a woman out you know sets up um sets up uh what they're going to do on the date but but in this particular point it's actually about taking the ball by the horns and saying look i'm interested in you mm. like you know how about we go out like i've got i'm I'm, uh, we're, there's a fun thing happening this weekend that I'd love you to come to. Really, there's a couple of things in that, right? There's there's one is the is the words of asking out, but the second one is being the first to, to convey that full bodied interest. Mm, that's yeah. a great point. Yeah, it's like mm. I am interested in you. Mm. You know, I'm not gonna wait and hope that it, this is what David said about vulnerability. This is being vulnerable. Mm. You know, I'm not going to wait for you to say that you like me so that I can go, okay, fine. I like you too. Yeah. Like some school kid, uh, you know, you might be a school kid listening and that's fine. If you are, you carry on. <laughs> but, <laughs> but for the adults among us, <laughs> then, you know, at this point as an adult, like, you know, as a man, it's, it's, it's amazing to just be able to, to, um, to take, to take the lead and be the one to say it first and say like, hey, you know, let's let's um, let's hang out this weekend. Let's do something. Um, uh, I'd, I'd love to take you out. Like I re I'm really enjoying our conversations. Mm. Uh, there's this I see 
I see that we could have fun and and really just making a move. Like you know, for me, it's about it's it's about emotional intelligence. It's about expressing those emotions. Yeah, yeah. And I I pick up on something you said there. At the beginning is like being willing to show interest. Mm. And I think this is another point of of leadership and assertiveness. Is like going, hey, I like you. Like mm. you don't have to say it like that. But it's like actually be willing to show that you like the girl. And again, this is being vulnerable because you're vulnerable to her going, hey, I don't feel the same. Or her not, not when I say rejecting your advances, her, she might be like, okay, cool, you like me. And she may be lukewarm or cold to your response, but you will still stand there and go, I'll stand by what I did because I do. This is how I feel. And it's okay. And it's also okay if she doesn't feel the same way as you do right then and there, right? Yeah. Because... It's something I remember when I used to, you know, go out a lot and I used to be, especially when I used to ask women for their numbers quite often, I used to very much pref like preface the asking of a number with like, I've really enjoyed talking to you. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't always be the same, I've really enjoyed talking to you. Sometimes it'd be like, oh, I've really loved this conversation. Like, hey, let's, let's do this again sometime. Yeah. Because it was really just genuinely like, yeah, I actually really enjoyed this. And I'm happy to say that, you know, because a lot of guys are trying to be too cool for fucking school, right? Yeah. You're trying to be so cool that you think that's going to get you somewhere. And there is a balance to be had between, you know, talking to a girl after two minutes and being like, oh my God, I love you, you're amazing. Mm. Because equally, you don't know her yet. But if you've talked to someone for half an hour, saying that you've actually enjoyed the conversation, complimenting her on her ability to, I don't know, eke out interesting things from you, isn't a bad thing. Actually, it's an incredibly positive thing for you to do. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's sharing how you really feel and not being attached to the outcome of what happens because there's nothing wrong with sharing how you truly feel it's yeah. like oh this is how i feel and in fact that's actually when i first met chloe i remember saying something on the lines of like oh you're really pretty mm. and her saying to me i have a boyfriend and i said okay <laughs> yeah cool i mean it's, i still stand by like that doesn't change the statement you, you, and the, you, you know, didn't you didn't become ugly all of a sudden and because, also yeah. there's a really good point there yeah. guys because a lot of you will do this you will say to a girl hey you're really pretty and she'll go, I have a boyfriend. And you will apologize. Mm. You'll go, oh, I'm really sorry. Mm. And let's stop for a second. What are you sorry for? Mm. Like, she just said she had a boyfriend, which in, in fact is unrelated to the thing you said. Mm. Completely unrelated. You didn't say, have you got a boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I think you're pretty. Yeah, yeah. You know, in those moments, you know, Amma could have easily turned around and said, hey, I didn't ask you got a boyfriend. Mm. I just said you were pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's just one of those things where I... And, and I guess what this is, and maybe getting a bit ahead of ourselves here, but it's essentially standing standing by uh, what you're saying and um, and not wanting anything in return. Like I'm I'm saying this because this is this is what's true for me. I'm not saying it because I'm desiring to manipulate you or wanting an outcome. That's a difference. It's actually so you know one of the tasks we give our coaching clients is is around uh, giving compliments mm. and and the thing about giving compliments is you can give a compliment and not want anything in return yeah. that's completely fine however however the other person reacts is their reaction mm. but you can totally do it without wanting anything in return and just by freely um expressing it like you know like saying to someone have a nice day for example right yeah. people don't want anything in return when they say have a nice day you know, it's like, mm. so they just mean have a nice day like yeah. you know so it's kind of like sharing the happiness and joy, yeah. giving a piece of your happy cake. Happy cake. Happy cake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next point is is something around, it's like leading, creating a short list of things to do on a date. Mm. You know, this is something that, you know, we spoke about a little bit before is always asking like, oh, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What would you like mm. to do? What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I would, this is, I'm going to give you a tactical tip here, right? If you've been talking to a woman for a little while, you know, you've been talking on text, you've been talking on phone, Zoom dates, whatever, right? You would have amassed a certain amount of data points, you know, for the for engineers among you, you really understand this. <laughs> you, you would have amassed a certain number of data points about what she likes to do, who she is and what she likes. Mm. Now, the point of making creating a date and also the things that you like, the point of creating a date, you could think to yourself, I can think of maybe four things that we would both love to do, mm. right? Or maybe there's something that you really enjoy doing. And she said, I've never done that before, but it sounds interesting. You can go, hey, there's, you know, or you free next Thursday. Yeah, I was thinking we could go to X. Or we could go to Y. And you've just led and gone, these are the two things we could do, mm. right? It's, you're not manipulating, you're not forcing her. She could go, I don't want to do either of those mm. things. You can go, okay, cool. Yeah. And in that instance, you can go, okay, is there something you've got in mind? And she may suggest something, but you've actually led and been vulnerable 
in allowing for the rejection of your ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think the the thing about this as well, which communicates so much from very early on, this is an opportunity to share your world, your mm. life, your your experience of life. And what you enjoy, you know, for example, if I enjoy um, particular types of movies, you know, that could be something or table tennis or whatever, like that dancing, you know, certain types of music. Mm. That is an easy one. And it's so easy because I enjoy it. So, so it's like, you know, it could and it doesn't have to be complicated. Like, you, go, oh, you might go, oh, I don't like movies. I don't like uh, music, whatever. It could be a particular bar that you like, a particular area of town, mm. uh, you know, a shop or whatever. Um, not Tesco's um, or other brands <laughs> of, of supermarkets. You could do a date in a supermarket too. Um, but the point is, is uh, here, it's very easy when you actually think to yourself, like, you know, what do I enjoy doing? So to give you some ideas, like if, if it was me in, in my world and I was single and dating, I might invite a girl to a parkour class. Mm. Like, you know, I love my parkour. I love training parkour. I, I could easily invite to a class. It's physical. It's it's out there. It's active. It's different. It's yeah. me. You know. It's not. It's I'm not. I'm not um, uh, showing off or anything. It's just me. It's just what I. It's just what I enjoy doing. Uh, equally, equally, um, I could uh, teach her photography. Take yeah. her on a photo walk. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. that's an, it's an easy one. It's just something that I enjoy doing, guys. You know, we have a friend. His name's Kish. He loves sunsets. Yeah, yeah. He has, he actually loves sunsets, and so he knows some really cool sunset spots around London. Yeah. And you know, he'll, he'll often arrange dates where they end up watching the sunset at the end of the date. Like yeah. we have a really cool episode with him actually as yeah. well. I don't remember the number off the top of my There's head. There's two of them, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, way back, we did an episode about season, race. And season we one, yeah. About one about. Um, the magic of bringing like the travel vibe to your to your dates, and he talks through actually his his how he his ideal date. Yeah, and and that's the thing. And for me, one of the things that made dating so much easier was actually learning about who I am, loving that, and then sharing that with people. So that really makes it easy to to create a shortlist. Um, the next point I think is is really cool. It's uh, point number five is lead in progressing the relationship. Mm. And this is a big one because, again, um, I think one of the biggest blockers for men in in relationships is they, they're afraid of commitment for various reasons. Yeah. And the thing you've got to realize is you've got to reconcile what your reason is for, for being afraid of commitment in your own self um, to allow you to, to um, know that you actually want to take something forward and go, right, okay, I'm like, we've been... So, you know, there's no strict timeline on this. I think, if anything, this should be more emotionally based and feel based, but rather than, oh, it's been three months, one year, two years, whatever. It is what it is between the two of you, between the two of you right? But if you feel that your connection is, is uh, getting stronger and that you feel comfortable, and then you should be the one to, to, to convey that. You shouldn't... You know, she might get there before you, but you shouldn't wait. Yeah. Yeah. Like someone might say before you, oh, you know, I really enjoy you. You know, um, we could make this more of a thing or I would like to see you more often where, wherever you're starting. Because I'm not saying you've got to jump straight into a relationship, but like, let's say you're only seeing each other every so often. You're like, we well, you know, I'm really enjoying our conversations. I'd like to see you more. Mm. You know, something as light as that is a great place to start. And um, I also, you know, I also throw in there as well, like something that I really believe in is not running and rushing with things, not getting ahead of, be really present in where you are, where you are and communicate from that space because that will prevent the, um, the attachment to, oh, this has to work out and rather be in the enjoyment of the relationship yeah. and, and checking in like, hey, I'm really enjoying myself. How, how are you finding things between us? That yeah. sort of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, this is, again, this is one of the, the things that women say to us that men are not doing. It's mm. like, they're not being willing to progress the relationship even when it is that they want to but they're waiting for they're waiting to be sure that it's okay to do so you're mm. always looking for the green light mm. like okay so we've been on five dates and I'm really enjoying this and it's like oh I wouldn't mind seeing each other more often maybe like each week but not not taking the action to create those opportunities to see each other more often or saying I want to see each other more often waiting for the woman to say to tell you, oh, I'd like to see you more often. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that, are you always waiting for her to tell you how to move forward? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's why I prefaced it with this thing about commitment issues, because I know for a, 
script so many men like there is that in the background and especially if you're listening to us um you know we've we've dealt with that individually uh with our own commitment issues and, mm. and relationship serial dating stuff yeah uh so we know like how much of a issue that is when it comes to meeting someone even if we really like them like we were just talking about a couple of guys that we know you know they don't want a relationship until they meet someone and they meet someone they're like oh this person's amazing but then i don't want to commit because they're scared so, yeah. <laughs> so, and it's a vicious circle if you don't get that sorted yeah, yeah so you know if you do want to have a chat about that get in touch because um, that's something we've definitely worked through personally individually yeah and, a and, lot we, of men, and yeah. we coach men through because it's once you 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 work through that it really frees you to be in a relationship freely yeah and you know everything's a everything is in the communication so um Next point, number yeah. six, yeah. which is leading in yeah. in being assertive and being touched and making things more physical. This is something mm. that keeps coming up, actually, is especially now where we're all a bit worried about being with people and touching and corona and so forth. It's like, you know, doing that sort of leadership where you're, you know, it can be... It can be one of the things you do in the your first interaction when you meet a woman. It could just be like touching her on the shoulder when you, you, you start talking to her. And it can be that leading through, you know, once you've been on a few dates to lead into something more physical. Maybe you go back to each other's places. It might be the, the first kiss, you know, whatever it may be. But it's like being willing to lead. And I want to I wanna also put in here a big caveat around this, right? Is the importance of feeling in, actually, because... This is where you could just be forceful and be like, ah, mm. I'm in my desire. Mm. I feel horny. My penis is hard. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to lead her to my bedroom. And it's just having those moments where you're like, okay, let me, let me work up to the leading to the bedroom. Not like we go on a date, you sit and talk all night. There's no touching. And then you're like, hey, do you want to mm. come back to my place? Mm -hmm. It's actually a case of leading in the smaller steps on the way, the touching, the giggling, the laughing, the kissing that lead up to the going home right and leading in that and also when you, as a leader you also have to be willing that the person you're leading will not want to go there and yeah. you be okay with that mm. and go okay cool because if you're leading and you're forcing that is illegal <laughs> in these instances right in, in the touch yeah. and the sex because you know that's not how it's meant to be there has to be a care for the other person but the care doesn't have to extend to as much as always waiting for them to tell you when to make the next move. And I know for a lot of you guys are hearing that and going, oh, but that's so confusing, da 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 da, da. It's not. Mm. It's not that confusing. We've outlined it here multiple times, the differences mm. between the leadership, the forcing, the leadership, and what I call the passive action, you know, waiting mm. to be checked in and told. Yeah, there's, um, I think the, the thing that I, I think now because of like it, like if I was to be single and out there dating now, there's even more impetus ever than before because of um, the pandemic and Corona that we're currently existing in, uh, the times that we're currently in is that it, it there's more onus um, to be a leader and to be brave in your actions. And this is where communication is key. So, you know, like a, th this is a real thing now where people are more aware in touching and how to touch on close in closeness and you know there's there's an article you date uh, you, that you shared recently that discussed about you know what if you you agree on a social distancing date and then you wish now to change that mm. well the easiest thing in the world guys is discuss it you know like this it's okay to talk right but you, what you don't want to do is break a boundary physically and then have that be a problem whereas mm -hmm. at least if you discuss it and and uh, you bring it up as a topic and then you can check in and i think in today's world like being uh, getting consent like being consensual be, like being consensual in the sense of really being aware of the other person of how comfortable they are i'd have to say it's like being consensual right it's like having this ongoing thing of comfort especially when you're with someone that you're unfamiliar with mm. you know it's different when you're in a relationship for a long time and you know the person well and you know the nuances but when you're brand new with someone you you can't lose um you takes it takes guts like to just be able to be forthcoming and 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 speak openly uh yeah i mean it just sorry it just reminded me of a joke uh, i had with this guy yesterday he was talking about when two people meet on a date mm. is like when when do we take the masks off and i was like whoa bro you can't just you can't just jump straight to taking a mask off bro. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of he said what kind of dates are you going on bro <laughs> 
<laughs> you got to lead up to that, right? Oh, wow. When did you take the mask yeah, off? Yeah, when did you take the mask off? But yeah, but you know, it's kind of getting to that. I was like, oh, I was, I was joking to him. I said, oh, you're naughty, bro. <laughs> you're trying, trying to take, you know, slip an old mask off, is it? <laughs> wow. But, but yeah, but you see what I mean? There are, and, and you know, your experiences are your experiences, but like we're living in a world now where there is an undercurrent fear and like whatever you may think or believe you have to check in and and being consensual is being aware mm. of other people and their feelings yeah yeah exactly yeah and then the next point point seven here is kind of leading in your vulnerability with words emotions and actions and we've kind of touched upon this one in, in the previous mm. ones and it's like being willing to say that you actually like the person being willing to say that you want to go on a date you know but it can be there can be so many things like you know in this 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 piece about masculine leadership, which I think this is really what this episode's about. It's like, even like a woman comes to my house, right, for dinner. I'm, I'm on a date and she comes to my house for dinner. Like, I'm going to do the cooking, mm. you know? Unless it's like, I feel that it's going to be fun that we cook together, but my cooking space is pretty small. So I'm leading in that, in those interactions. Like, I'll be like, hey, do you want a drink? You're thirsty? Yeah, okay, cool. What do you want? Do you want some wine or do you want some water? You know, it's just, just those micro actions that you mm. can always be in your leadership mm. you know or you can always be like oh you know a majesty what would you like <laughs> what would make you happy you know that kind of thing it's like being willing to you know lead and suggest and go okay oh you like red wine actually well, it's really great red wine i think you'll love you'll love it i really like it here's this red wine you know that kind of thing it's mm. like being willing to lead yeah 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 and and that point there you know it really i feel is like the foundation for the for all the other points that we've made here is in that being um leading being vulnerable you know and be with your words and your emotions it's there right it's it's so important and it's something that i would say that if you feel like okay you've heard this and you you recognize that this is an area that you you've been struggling with or you haven't done a lot of it's to start actually taking decisions for yourself mm. and knowing what you know after you've taken the decision knowing whether that was good or bad for you like you know maybe you normally drink wine not beer try the beer and and like you know just just try it out um, and that way, when you're with another person, like, you know, for yourself, like, okay, this is how I am. This is the sort of things I like, or this is something that I don't care about. Like, um, like I was, I was saying recently, like when it comes to sushi nowadays, it all tastes great to me as long as it's good sushi, you yeah. know? So, <laughs> so I don't mind, like someone wants to order whatever they want to order. I'm like, cool, just order it. Like, I'm sure it's going to taste, I'm sure it's going to taste great as long as it's good. So, yeah. So then the final point is, um, Point number eight is like, where else in your life can you express your leadership? Because mm. we've, we've focused here on dating and leadership is something that you cultivate. Like, especially, like I said, if you were raised in a culture where your own personal leadership wasn't honored, wasn't encouraged and, and stuff wasn't developed, then this is something where no doubt in other areas of your life, whether it is with your family, work, uh, even exercise and your own with your own self, self-discipline, like where else in your life can you express your leadership? And I would, I would bet, I would bet you right now that a lot of our listeners, a lot of, especially the male listeners out there, that there is areas in your creativity, like things that you just enjoy doing for the hell of it, whether yeah. it be photography, art, um, singing, Drawing. dancing, yeah, some sort of ex expression. Like for me recently, I got an electric skateboard. It's a bit like, it's not so much creativity, but it is part of my more playful side, yeah. right? So that's what I'm talking about. Like going, yeah, this is just something that I'd like to do. Mm. It could well be traveling. Like, oh, I just always wanted to go to China. I always wanted to go, or well, maybe China's not the best place right now. Uh, but I always <laughs> wanted to go to uh, South America, China, whatever. Like, you know, something that just calls to you. Or some part of England. Or, you know, I always wanted to read this book. Or I always wanted to take the time to study this course. Photography, like you did, David, and stuff, yeah. you know. Just something that hasn't got anything to do with some methodical outcome-based uh make me a millionaire type thing it's just like for fun right and you know express that because i tell you that's going to pay dividends not just in dating but your own happiness and your own enjoyment yeah 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 so yeah. there you go guys eight points uh, make the first move to message her lead and expand number two lead and expanding a conversation three lead and asking her out four leading getting a, a things to do on a date five progress the relationship six be assertive in touch and making the relationship physical. Seven, being vulnerable with your words, emotions, and actions. And eight, 
in your life in general, where else can you express leadership? Mm. There's a lot in that episode, man. Wow. There's yeah. a lot of, a lot. And, and the thing is, guys, is these are areas of your life. You probably, this is probably an area of your dating that you're sitting going, oh, I'm doing all right in this. But really be honest with yourself. Are you really like, are your dates moving, progressing to the next level? Because this is something I'd say, this is probably one of the number one issues we see in men that we coach. Mm. So, you know, have a conversation with us. Give us, uh, send us a message on Instagram. Or at, uh, hello at authenticdatingseries.com. There's a three, free one hour call that we do, coaching call that we do with guys if you're interested in coaching. But the first call is free. There's no obligation. We go through any issue you're, you're dealing with. And, you know, you're going to get value from just having the first hour call, which costs you nothing. And you get massive value from, which is like a no brainer. Cool. And don't forget uh, on the 30th of this month, we've got the power of authentic communication. You get £100 off if you use the code word podcast when you sign up on eventbrite you'll find the link in the show notes and hopefully catch you there we're going to be going through everything that you've taught today uh, we've spoken about today we're going to be teaching you how to tap into your own authentic communication and how to really you know lead in your communication you know that's the one of the main things about this um being being authentic is you naturally your natural leadership comes out your natural confidence comes out so yeah uh, i look forward to seeing you there and then otherwise you know till next time Cool. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.